Welcome to Everything Happens in a Conversation. Let's chat about clarity. And today, my guest is Gretchen Lee. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so Gretchen, um, for the purpose of the people who are going to listen to us, tell us a little bit about, like most of them know me already, so it's now it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> to say, who are you? Sure. So my name is Gretchen Lee and um, Jasmine and I know each other because we're both in the same coaching program, Super Coach Academy. Mm -hmm. And um, I am, um, my background is in massage therapy. And then I, um, and I, and I built a business. I built a, a massage center and uh where? can you tell us where? Oh, sorry, and that's in gloucester massachusetts that's where <laughs> i live okay. and um what i discovered through that process of building the business is that i sort of outgrew the the container of myself of being a massage therapist and discovered that i loved so many other aspects um i loved to me building a business felt like a big art project I loved having to get my hands into interior design and graphic design and having to learn how to be, you know, myself in my marketing and, and show up that way, which was really difficult at the beginning. And, um, and then, you know, and there were so many elements of it that I've just loved and had to kind of have my hands in a lot of pieces that um and then because i had done that a lot of people started talking to me about their aspirations for the businesses that they wanted to open and um and so i kind of developed this new what got me into coaching is that i i started working with other women in particular around business building um just organically like i didn't mean to do it it just happened mm. and um and i've discovered that i really just love it i just really love being with people um as they move from a process of wanting to do something to to starting to do it and that seems like a big a lot of times feels like um just a psychological shift from i wish i was to i am mm -hmm. you know and um so so that's kind of how i've i've started on my coaching journey and um but i was really excited to talk to you about clarity because i have been i feel like i've been like in an immersion program on what clarity is for the last since march 14th when i had to close my business Mm. And um, there have been moments of clarity and there have been lots of moments of, n of no clarity. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I've learned a lot. I've, I've learned a lot or I'm being challenged a lot in this specific area. Mm. So... So if, if, if I get to ask you what, what is clarity since, you know, you've addressed it, let, let's do that. Like what, what, like, how do you know you've got clarity basically? It feels totally different. Clarity feels so different than thinking. Mm. Sometimes when I think about the difference between thought, like clear, okay, so clarity seems much more like knowing. It comes from that deeper place. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, I try to seek clarity by thinking through an issue or wondering what might happen or in the context of COVID, watching the news and 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 reading up on things and and um, 
that really just actually was about trying to pre predict the future and just led to a lot of scattered thinking. Um, but clarity, to me, always feels like it comes in through the stomach, not the head. <laughs> yeah, I get the feeling. I know I get the visual. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like you just know what to do on instinct. Mm. So just for the purpose of the people listening, it just occurred to me that, you know, we talked about Super Coach Academy, but we didn't really, you know, clarify uh, what well, Super Coach is there. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, in essence, we're not going to go into teaching mode. In essence, what we, we look at as super coaches is we look at how we, how we work and how, how we experience life and how, how there's, um, there's this place in us that is clear. And then there's this other place in us that's totally not clear. And we tend to um, qualify them as wisdom and thought and, and thinking, not thought, thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so when, when we're talking about clarity, I think we both agree on that part where clarity is just, is just a knowing. It's this place within us where we're like yeah I know I it's just like it's just clear and it's so funny you know that the example that I give my clients is you know there are things that you're just totally clear about and you don't think about it's like if I say to you let's go rob a bank you're clear that we're not going to do it I mean I haven't met you somebody. assume you assume that it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> I haven't met anybody yet that said, oh, no, no, I, I could do it. <laughs> Not on camera anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Not live streaming. Exactly. But there, there is this place where we know things. Um, and I, it's so funny because I remember one day I was swimming. I was in the pool and I was chatting with a friend. And, um, you know, she was asking me questions. And I was getting a little fidgety, mm. you know, like I couldn't answer the question. Like, I, and I was looking for, you know, I have to know the answer. And, and, and I saw how I was just not clear. Like I, and instead of, instead of saying, Hmm, I don't know. I was like searching inside my mind, you know, for the answer. Yeah. And what was cool in that interaction is that I saw that sometimes clarity is that you don't know. Because I had it, I, it, I assumed that clarity was, I know everything, <laughs> you know? Oh, you're, you're right. Because there's a part of um, not knowing can be filled with really Sorry. Fra fragmented, distressed thinking. But you can experience real clarity while not knowing when that feels like, okay, I just don't know. And when I do know, I'll act. That to me feels so different than, ah, uh, what am I going to do? And what if this happens? And what if that happens? And blah, blah, blah. And trying to kind of prepare for every situation yeah which but, you do but it feels so liberating to me to go i don't know and that's not a problem i need to solve it really changes the experience mm -hmm. yeah because like you know, let's say you had to close your business, you know, on March 14th. I, I could definitely see how that fact would generate so much thinking. 
totally. Well, even leading up to it. So it was, a, that was, that was a really interesting experience given the, what, you know, these have after spending a few months studying, knowing and clarity in our program, you know, it's like the week before I closed. So that was a really, you know, stressful decision. But the week before I closed, it was evolving really fast every day. You know, the there was more on the news about COVID. Uh, I could see my team's anxiety changing and clients' anxiety changing. And every single day, I just watched and I responded to what was there. Um, and I started to have the question, am I going to close? Should I close? But I didn't, I stayed grounded and just paid attention to what was and reassured people and, um, you know, changed some of our protocols. And, but by the end of the week, it was really, really clear that what I wanted to do and what seemed like the right decision for everyone involved was to close the business. Mm. But one week before, it looked totally different. And, um, and I just noticed that it's possible. So that's the worst thing that's ever happened in my business. <laughs> um, but my energy was really calm. Mm. Um, and I won't, I won't say I stayed that way <laughs> for the last two, two and a half months, but something really cool is happening that, I, for a while, I, I stayed in that space of responding to what was, you know, um, some grant opportunities came around and I applied, you know, I, I did everything there was to do and nothing more. And I knew, I trusted that eventually, initially I was trusting that the clarity about reopening or, I mean, let's face it, closing the business at all, you know, permanently, mm -hmm. if that, worst case scenario, um, I knew that that would become clear. And then there's been this in-between time where I, it's like I, I didn't stay in that knowing. I was thinking about it, and I was like, it's as if I'm laying sunbathing on the beach and screaming, help! <laughs> You know, because like day to day, I've been safe. I've been going on a lot of dog walks, but my mind has really been active. But sure enough, you know, as reopening has gotten closer and we have more information about the virus, I am much more clear on what I'll need to do in order to reopen and I'm get, heading towards clarity around when. So what I've really learned about it is that all those months in those two months in between where I was freaking out really was a waste of time. Mm. Wouldn't it be cool if we had that insight stick to our brains? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, it's always a waste of time, but like when we're in it, we just don't see it. Yeah. And, you know, I love, I, like one of the things that I'm getting in this, in, in, in our conversation that we've been doing for a little while now, um, is that there's like the, the thing that sticks to me and I've said this in other chats because it's just like to me it's like if anybody 
and I don't, I don't have it all. I, I don't, it, you know, it's not with me all the time, but there's no past. There's no future. There's just now, mm. you know, and that is, if, if you really think about it, is so calming. <laughs> It's so calming because it's like, okay, so whatever I did in my past, it doesn't exist. Whatever I think might happen in my future doesn't exist. Actually, one of my posts, <laughs> one, of my, one of my Instagram posts is, uh, is, have you ever noticed, I think it's today's, it said, have you ever noticed the future never gets here? Hmm right? There's only now. So it's like, how can, uh, like, what is this moment right now? And the more I get present to the moment right now, the less I want to think about the craziness, you know, the, the less I want to worry about the, the craziness. And I actually love it. And sometimes I go into my head, like I go back into my thinking and I'm like, oh, this, this, I, I have to be thinking. I should be thinking about something. I remember also thinking, okay, I should be anxious here. Something's happening and I should be anxious. You know, like there are things that are disappearing that my habitual way of being is, okay, I should stress or okay, I should worry, or, and I'm not doing it. Hmm. And then when, when, I, when I look at the moment and all of a sudden I'm like, hmm, I should be worrying. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to put myself back when really the freedom is in, is in right now. Hmm. Like, right now I'm not confronted with the virus. I'm right now, I'm lucky. I've, I've got a roof, I've got air conditioning because it's like 35 degrees C outside. It's like super hot. Is it hot in Massachusetts? Today, yeah, it's nice. It's like super hot. Um, so it's like I, I can appreciate the moment right now. You know, if I start thinking about what am I going to do, how am I going to do it, then I go into this, this chaotic place that I can't answer. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you don't, we don't ever do things that relate to the future. Like sometimes there are really concrete things that we need to do in the moment. Yeah. Given what's real, you know, given what's at some point I'm going to have to, you know, I will reopen my business and there'll be real projects I need to do in the present to prepare. Yeah. Until there's like specific information Unless I'm actually working on something concrete, just wondering about 50 million potential futures simultaneously isn't really useful. But what I'm, I'm kind of interested in, I, what I, I've been aware of is that what you're describing about the present that, that, that present moment that always goes with us because we're never in anything but. Um, when you really become aware of it, I notice how, how frequently the very, the, the present moment, not the present circumstances, but the millisecond moment that we're in is usually pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Usually, you know, it's like when I really am aware of the present, I notice the birds that are doing interesting things out the window, or I notice the feel of the air, or I notice the flavor of my iced coffee, you know? And I think even, even when we're, even when we're suffering, even when we're going through hard things. Well, I don't know if this is going to switch us going to suffering, but if you think about it, you know, suffering is 
thought. It's a judgment on the present moment. There is the present moment. And the present moment is kind of like, it's neutral until we put something inside. Even the beauty, even the, you know, even the beauty is putting something inside the present moment. What do you mean by that? Well, what, what happens in the moment is what happens in the moment. And then we can, we see things, but saying that it's pretty or saying that it's not pretty is just what we add. I see. You know what I mean? So, and it's not wrong. I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. Hmm. Um, but it exists in the world of thought. Yeah. Like I was having a conversation with a client the other day and I could see that the suffering was coming from you know she was having thinking she was having thinking about the future and we're having this whole conversation about the present you know so she's having a judgment on the conversation about the future hmm. right and i'm like no no you can have that i mean you can you we can think like at one point i saw that you know wisdom good thought bad <laughs> you know i i kind of like had them like classify but you know what no even the thought even the, the thoughts are, are neutral. Hmm. They have a different quality. Yeah. Well, it's so funny. I, I, I'm not, I'm not totally clear about it yet, but it used to be like thought, the thinking for me, the, the mulling over the thought, you know, there's like, there's the thought of, I have to, I'm, I'm going to have to close my business, right? There's that thought. But then there's the thinking that, gener that that thought generates, which is, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to my employees? Blah, 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 blah. So I kind of like, I kind of like separate the two in my mind. It's kind of like, yeah, there, there's the thought and then there's the thinking, the thinking that I just, as soon as I see that thought that just generates this whole <laughs> stuff, whole bunch of stuff that comes up with, you know, like if I, and, and it's funny, I had a conversation this morning with someone about, you know, like we are confronted right now with situations that we're unfamiliar with mm. so like everywhere we go we are confronted with a new situation this new situation brings on new thought mm. that we're not familiar with and therefore we're generating more thinking mm. and then we go into the no clarity <laughs> absolutely no clarity mode right because okay well this is new thought I, what am i going to do with this like you know yeah i mean what i was experiencing like i could see that i was having a lot of unhelpful thinking when i was really feeling unclear yeah um and the more that i tried to go like like police my my unhelpful thinking the worse it got mm. you know to me it seems yes. like the only thing that helps is to just 
leave it. Like I can know it's not helpful. Yeah, we had a, you know, our class that, that we had um, this week where Jack says, just take your thinking and take it off <laughs> and put it down, you know? Yeah. I that was a great, that was a great uh, visual. <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. So I had a crazy, I, I have a story. Okay. That. We have Georgia that says hello, girls, and we have Rose that says hello. Oh, yay. Um, so I had this crazy thing happen to me. Uh, do you remember the day that Barb, Barb Patterson's master class? I don't remember that day, but tell me more. Well, that, same, that day, right before that call, I had a terrifying thing happen to me. And um, what it was is that my dog and I went for a walk and um, a lot of the places, some of the places that we typically go for, um, you know, I go for a long walk in the woods almost every day, uh, every day, but sometimes I go to the beach, but usually we go to the woods. And um, some, the place where we normally go was shut down. So I was kind of getting into um, finding really remote spots to walk. Um, and this was right after the shutdown. And so we went on this path that I had never been on before. And it was kind of like an overgrown path. And, um, but it was kind of cool. It felt like wild and just like I was exploring new territory. And then we, we went for a while and then the path was too overgrown. So it, I was kind of losing sight of the path. So I, something inside me said, you know what, this doesn't feel right anymore. You got to turn around. And so I turned around and we were walking back and all of a sudden my dog, his name is Bodhi, um, whipped around and started barking and I turned around and there was a giant coyote that was right there um, and had been following us. And it was so big. It looked, it was like, picture in, in your mind a wolf. It looked like a wolf. And um, so immediately the, um, I just went into like, you probably see me as a pretty calm person. I was a wild animal. I was a bear. I was a giant black bear. And um, what happened, and so, but what was so cool about it actually is my thinking was not there. I was operating fully on instinct. And um, what happened was the coyote, started running and my dog followed it and I knew from another story I heard that what they do is they lure your dog far away and then they'll turn on it and attack mm -hmm. so the second Bodie started chasing the coyote I started screaming for Bodie and he turned around and he came he started running back and sure enough that big coyote was right at its heels and I just charged in and I just got big and I started screaming and the coyote turned back and I stopped and then the kite shirt then the coyote would pursue me again I had to do this three times screaming like a maniac arms up in the air one point I grabbed a branch I grabbed like basically a tree and I was like this, and I was, I was swearing. I mean, I was saying the craziest, awful things. Um, <laughs> and then the coyote started, um, it just froze and it started howling like it was howling at the moon. And then I got really scared because I thought, oh shit, it's calling its friends. So I go, Bodie, go, go, go. And 
my dog and I sprinted out of the woods for like a half mile got to the and like I kept looking back and I could hear it howling so I knew it wasn't coming closer and um like at one point my dog stopped to pee and I'm like go 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 no time for that we jump in the car and I locked the doors as if the coyote was going to come and start shaking the door I mean it was it was it was so terrifying and it was dangerous but um what I learned from it is that there is other level clarity available to us like i was not thinking at all during that whole thing i was only acting mm. you know what i mean like i knew what to do my body and my my brain just knew what to do mm. and i thought this is really what it's about i wish i could feel that clear or i wish i could remember in the moments that don't feel clear that that kind of clarity comes to us when we need it you know but it's usually like we're just not in situations that are that serious that we can see it so it's like it's literally before thinking yeah it's it's before and beyond hmm. it's it's pure it's it's raw responsiveness to the present moment mm. i mean i probably could have flipped a car <laughs> it was like that you know it was that superhuman thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah in my mind the whole time you were telling the story was man that coyote would have gotten me because i can't run <laughs> you might have been able to yeah right? who knows yeah exactly it, it's funny it's true like I, I keep about i think about that often you know i'm like you know if somebody tried to catch me I mean, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not running. I can't run. So here, <laughs> you know? Well, I think what that's exactly it. It's like when you think about, yeah. if I had thought about being in that situation, I, I would have guessed yeah. I would have frozen or that I would have done it wrong or, you know, or I would have, you know, I, I would think of the things that could have happened but there was no hesitation yeah you, and that's why you hear people what's that you already had wisdom with you because you had already heard it coming through right you you were like when you were going somewhere and you're like okay now this is too far we got to turn around so you it was already like yeah it's always there it was there's proof of it right before it you know yeah i could have ignored that and kept going but it was very clear that my knowing told me i was not in a good place mm. yeah so if we think about it so that happened really I, am I am I being choppy? You yeah you are you're something is. I think I'm hearing there's like a delay on the sound. 
Yeah, it told me that my internet connection is unstable. Yeah. Oh, well, what would here? Let's, let's, um, let's shut it down. L tell me what would your, um, what would you leave people with about clarity? Hmm. Hmm. I would just invite everyone to think of a time where they simply knew what to do without thinking about it. I bet everyone can think of an example. And... To know that that is always available, that's not those, the clarity, the times that we just know what to do, that feels like um, the outlier situation. But the more that we know and trust that that's an option, that kind of clear knowing, think the faster we can catch ourselves when we're acting the opposite. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? What's coming to me as you're speaking is it's kind of like clarity is there's, there's no, you've got no questioning. You know, like you're not questioning the, the answer, you know, you're not, you're not inside your head going, is this right? Is this not right? Well, actually, that's actually a clue that you're not being clear, <laughs> right? If you're questioning, but clarity is just like, yeah, you don't need, you don't need to uh, put a label on this is the right answer this this is just the answer that's clarity it's that's what it is you know you just know yeah clarity is a noun clarity is is a thing whereas deciding is an action you, you know it's a, it's our thoughts it's mm -hmm. a busy mind mm -hmm. clarity is is there's no movement in it it just is mm. clarity is still is that what you said something like that yeah i like it that's a new face i don't know if i said clarity is still did i say that i don't no? know but i'm writing it down and it's a new it's a new instagram post yeah okay <laughs> well yeah i think I think, um, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's not, it's not, there's no movement in it. It's just, it's just that thing that you go, oh yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. That makes sense. There's no movement in it. Wow. Well, guys, um, uh, we are ending today, but... Gretchen is coming back. We're having it next week. We're going to be, next week we're having a whole week of healing. And so she's coming back on Monday. 
for sure, because we're having a chat with a whole bunch of people on Monday. Um, and then uh, she's coming back. I don't remember which day. Do you remember, Gretchen? Later in the week. Friday, maybe? I don't remember. But yeah. <laughs> just go see my calendar, guys. Like that, that is going to give you a chance to go see my webpage. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm going to come back next week. And then um, uh, Gretchen's going to talk about what she's seen with um, the, the Super Coach Academy and um, healing with massage therapy. Looking forward to hearing your point of view and what you've seen on that. I'm looking forward to being back. This is so fun. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, it was fun. Thank yeah. you, everybody. You have a fantastic day. You go clearly wherever you want to go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'll see you soon. I'm going to end the streaming session now. So have a good day, everybody. You take care.